whether it is photography or cinematography, taking a blurry image or shaky footage would be the worst nightmare for you. But no matter how experienced you are in photography, if you are shooting handheld, there would be some shake which might ruin the picture. So to address this problem and save you from clicking blurry images, image stabilization technology was first developed. And today, it works like a charm. But do you know how image stabilization works? And which stabilization is perfect for which situation? What is the meaning of 5 axes of image stabilization or 5 stops of image stabilization? In this video, we are going to discuss all these. So let's get started. First, we are going to discuss the stabilization axis. The most commonly used stabilization is the two axis stabilization, and these two axes are yaw and pitch. These movements are caused when the whole camera is not moving, but the angle of the camera is changing. It's more like the camera is attached to a single anchor point and moving up and down, meaning the pitch movement, or left and right, meaning the yaw movement. Moreover, when you press the shutter button, there is some rolling effect on the camera caused by the button press. This roll is the third axis. Then comes the fourth and fifth axis, which is the horizontal translation and vertical translation. It is more like the camera is not fixed to an anchor point and the whole camera body moves up and down or left-right. These movements are common when capturing close-up shots or macros and also in videos. Now as you have understood the types of shakes that might occur while capturing footage, you might be thinking about how the camera detects those unintentional movements. Well, there is a gyro detection sensor inside the camera that detects the shake. And this sensor is so fast and efficient that it can quickly detect even a slight movement in almost no time and send the signal about the movement of the camera's processor. After that, the processor analyzes the data and takes a decision as to in which direction the sensor should move to compensate for the shake. And then the processor sends the movement information, or in plain words, movement orders to the stabilization mechanism that is attached to the image sensor inside the camera. So if you move the camera to this direction, your camera stabilization mechanism will move to the opposite direction to eliminate the shake. The same technique is followed for all 5 axes to counter every possible shake. And that's how you get smooth footage. But there is only one problem with center-based image stabilization. When you use a longer focal length lens, the center-based image stabilization is not very effective. And this is where you need lens-based optical image stabilization. Speaking of lens-based optical image stabilization, it is found on the lenses, as the name suggests. If you take a look at the inner part of a lens, you will find that the lens is made of different glass elements and light has to pass through all the elements before reaching the camera's sensor. So what if the lens glass element moves accordingly to the camera shake to compensate for unwanted movement? If that's possible, the sensor would get a smooth image. Well, this is the main concept behind lens-based optical image stabilization. In some cameras, the sensor and the lens-based stabilization works in coordination with each other and give you the best stabilization experience. However, both of these stabilizations can make the new price of lenses and cameras go crazy. And to keep the price low, there is a cheaper version of stabilization called electronic image stabilization. So all the stabilization methods previously discussed were hardware-based stabilization. And now we're going to talk about software-based image stabilization called electronic image stabilization. In this method of stabilization, each frame is analyzed by the processor to determine the shake. Then the frame are matched and aligned by the processor, which creates a sense of stability in the footage. But the process involved a crop factor to align the footage frame by frame, and this is one of the biggest issues with electronic image stabilization. From the definition, it is clear that the electronic image stabilization works best for higher frames per second settings. Because more frames means lesser movement per frame, and thus the processor needs to work less for aligning the frames. This is why cameras with higher FPS like the GoPro and iPhones 
use electronic image stabilization. But for bigger cameras and lesser FPS, electronic image stabilization is not so effective. Now let's talk about image stabilization stops. But first, let's understand some rules of photography in order to eliminate camera shake to a level that your footage doesn't look blurry. The rule of thumb is to set the minimum shutter speed at 1 by the focal length of the lens you are shooting with. So if you are using a 200mm lens, you must set the shutter speed at least 1 by 200th of a second while shooting handheld. But the problem is, shooting at a higher shutter speed reduces the amount of light entering the sensor and if you slow down your shutter speed, you end up taking blurry images while shooting handheld. So that's the dilemma. And this is where image stabilization comes into the picture to solve your dilemma. Now we all know the image stabilization is usually measured in stops. But what is a stop you might ask? In simple terms, these stops let you shoot at a slower shutter speed without blurring the image. For example, suppose you are shooting with a 100mm lens and so you have to shoot at a minimum shutter speed of 1 by 100th of a second. Now if your lens or camera has a one stop of image stabilization, you can shoot at a shutter speed of 1 by 15th of a second and get the same result as the 1 by 100th shutter speed. Similarly, if you have two stops of image stabilization, you can shoot at a shutter speed of 1 by 25th of a second and get the same smooth image as if you were shooting at 1 by 100th shutter speed. So this is how image stabilization stops, lets you shoot at a slower shutter speed and let more light enter into the sensor. So that was all about the image stabilization. Hope you have a better understanding of stabilization axis and stops. The image stabilization technology is continuously improving and we have seen some better examples of image stabilization in the Olympus camera. So what new innovation would you like to see in image stabilization in the future? Let us know in the comment section.